Okay, we are recording. You can go ahead and get started. Perfect. Um, well, we'll go ahead and uh, begin our hearings for tonight. This is uh, May 16th, 2024. Uh, we have two things on the agenda. Um, <clears throat> So uh, one is, oh, I got the wrong agenda. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing listed on the agenda is an appeal of uh, a COA denial at uh, 370 North, 200 West, um, appeal by Mr. Kevin Anderson. Um, the second thing that we have on the agenda is a variance request for off street parking at approximately uh, 563 uh, North, I believe, Center Street uh, by James Cox. Um, is, let's see here, do we have Mr. Cox here? He's, he's in attendance. He just can't speak because he's in the attendees list. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so he is present, but. We don't move him over into the panelists um, list until it's his turn to speak. I see. So I I, I was inclined um, to handle that one first because I, I I suspect it's going to go quicker. Um. And and I think uh, they were both noticed for five o'clock. Um. So if it's all right, can we start with that variance request? Sure, we can do that. Let me switch we some have things Mr. around. Rios for that as well. Um, Mayara Lima will be filling in for Seth Rios as he's out on vacation. Perfect. Let me know when you're ready, Aubrey. I'm trying to figure out how to move Kevin and Noah or back into the attendees list. I've never had to do that before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Comment um, so that the public's aware this item is a public hearing. Um, if you want to speak once the public hearing is open, you'll raise your hand. Um, the digital hand at the bottom of the screen and you will be called on and unmuted as needed. Thank you. All right, have we got everybody here then? Um, yes. So we'll go ahead and and uh, officially hear this case, the variance request for off, variance request for off street parking at uh, 563 North Center Street by James Cox, um, where there, where this is a variance request, the standards that, that I am looking at um, are that uh, that need to be shown during the hearing is that literal enforcement of this of of the requirements uh, for off street parking would cause unreasonable hardship for the applicant that's not necessary to carry out the general purpose uh, of the zoning code. That there are special special circumstances attached to the property that do not generally apply to other properties in the same zoning district. That granting the variance is essential to the enjoyment of a substantial property right possessed by other property in the same district. That the variance will not substantially affect the general plan of the city and will not be contrary to the public interest and the spirit of uh, the zoning code that is observed and substantial justice done. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with James, uh, Mr. Cox. Um, Mr. Cox, can you please turn on your camera? Yes, I'm trying to, but for some reason, um, it's not activating. I don't know why. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay. My apologies. I don't know what's going on with my system here on the Zoom, but I can hear you and see you all fine. I'll I'll continue to try, but um, my Zoom webinar is showing as not responding. So 
uh, I'm not sure if my video is going to work today. Aaron, do you want to move forward with that the way it is, or? Um, let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, for now, um, Mr. Okay. Cox, if you'll just if if you see that something changes and you're able to get your video on, that would be great. Sure, I'll um, continue trying. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, this is your time, Mr. Cox, to to make presentation to me regarding the variance your request. Um, anything you'd like me to know about the request and the application? Um, well, I, I had the opportunity to review the staff report, and I, I think it summarizes all of the issues um, very succinctly and accurately, um, which is basically this is a small lot that's only 19 feet wide, and there's no real physical way of constructing parking on the premises without um, completely you know, altering the lot and making it basically unbuildable um, for anything besides parking. So um, that that's really the purpose of the variance request. Um, you know, it's, the city has determined that it is buildable, um, but you know, the issue we have is just there's no physical place to put on that lot um, on-site parking. Okay. A anything else you'd like me to know at this point? I'm happy to go through any questions, but um, you know, again, I think the staff report um, goes into uh, quite a bit of detail in terms of the scenarios we've looked at and um, you know, the efforts to try and um, go a different route without uh, requesting a variance. Okay. Um, in that case, then I'll uh, turn some time over to Ms. Lima, is it, who is staff here to present on this issue? Yeah. Aubrey, can you let me share my, sorry, I can hear you. You should be able to do that without permissions. Oh, okay, where is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> share screen. At the bottom of the briefs, yeah, share screen. There you go. All we, well, having technical issues. Okay, can you see it? No. No, can't see it. Okay, share screen. Screen too. And if it doesn't work, it's fine too. But there you go. Can you see that? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is um, just to have a illustrated um, what we're trying to uh, do here. So uh, the applicant is requesting the variance of two parking stalls required to be on on site uh, to be able to build a single family dwelling on the property. And we are recommending approval of that variance. Um, the property is located in the SR1A zoning district, but also in the Capitol Hill local historic district. Um, it's a very small property, has about um, 12 hundred square feet and a little bit over uh, 12 feet in width. Uh, that's a very small lot. It's substandard even for the SR1A zoning district. Uh, but uh, like the applicant mentioned, that property was found to be legal. Um, it was subdivided prior to our zoning regulations, zoning ordinance. So it is a legal, um, a legal existing lot. This is the proposed site plan the applicant is um, wanting to do. Um, the, the slanted uh, lines show an easement that would allow the building to have uh, windows. That easement is on the adjacent property. Um, the proposal does not comply with the underlying zoning district, but the applicant is requ requesting several modifications of zoning requirements to the Historic Landmark Commission. The Historic Landmark Commission has the ability to modify um, lot and bulk standards. So that would be setbacks, height, uh, required yards. Um, and that falls outside of, um, the off-street parking falls outside within of that scope. So they are not allowed to modify those standards. And that's why we're here. We are not looking at setbacks and height here because um, we haven't decided, well, we haven't um, 
decided on a date for historic landmark commission and the design could still change, uh, but they are requesting those modifications as well, just for an understanding of, um, you know, to be able to build on this property, there will be se several modifications. Um, in the analysis of the staff report, I won't go over that, but we found that um, to be able to uh, provide parking on this property, um, a driveway or a garage or a carport, those will all uh, would all change the design of the building and will compromise the ability of the property owner to comply with the historic overlay. Um, giving the size and the shape of the slot, um, we believe that there is a hardship um, and that waiving the two stalls, the two parking stalls is the minimum amount necessary to relief of the hardship. Um, yeah, and we also found that um, lots of similar size and shape in the district don't have off-street parking. Um, actually, a lot of the properties in this area don't provide off-street parking, um, but especially those that have similar size. Um, so yeah, we are agreeing with the applicant that um, this complies with the standards of the variance and should be granted. And that is it for city's presentation. I, I have a couple follow-up questions for you. Um, my understanding is that this parking requirement is citywide. Is that correct? Yes, and it applies specific to this district, the SR1A. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so it's both citywide and required in the in the specific zone. Yes. So, and it's it's for the use too. So, single family requires two parking stalls in the SR1A. Okay. District. And, and I guess the other thing that I was curious about are what other uses um, are allowed in that zone that that could that the property could um, be used for. It's mostly residential. Um, I would have to check here, but it would. The SR1A is a, stop sharing, sorry. The SR1A is a uh, residential district. So a lot of the uses are more um, similar to residential. So it would probably be uh, daycare uses, dwelling of limited density, uh, group homes, open space park, potentially a place of worship, urban farm, that those are the uses allowed. Okay. Um, is, is the city requesting any conditions uh, be put in place uh, as part of granting this variance, such as uh, obtaining that easement on See, is it the south end of the park uh, from from the property to the south for parking or uh, is that not something the city is looking for no i think if we're if we're granting the variance for the parking uh we do have in our land use tables uh a land use called off street parking um and i think requiring it on, on a property on another property would be a violation of that it's prohibited in the SR1A. So we're just not, re the, the request here is to not require any parking. Okay. N no parking at all is, yes. is, is being required. Okay. The easement would be required for them to be able to build the house with the openings on that wall. So that would, that would, if they don't have the easement um, of air space, they would not likely get a building permit for the building. Fair enough. Yep. But a different issue there, I guess. Okay. Yeah, a different issue. All right. Um, so at this point, then we'll open up the public hearing for this uh, item. Um, anybody who's here that would like to make a comment um, regarding this application for a variance, um, uh, as was mentioned before, go ahead and hit that raise your raise hand icon at the bottom of the screen and uh, we'll 
give everyone who wants to two minutes to make comment on this application. We have Miranda, you can unmute yourself. Hey, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Um, so <laughs> I, I live on Center Street. Um, so I'm a neighbor to this, uh, this lot. Okay. Um, I'm also on the city's transportation advisory board. Um, I have a keen interest in, in parking and especially parking minimums. Uh, I think this is a great thing for the neighborhood and for the city when we grant variances like this because we need more housing. Um, we need to prioritize people, I think, over uh, cars as much as we can, uh, especially in a neighborhood like this. So that would just be my two cents is that I am someone living on the street and I support granting this variance. Perfect, thank you. Any other public comment here? We do not have any further hands raised. Okay. Close the public uh, hearing portion of this. Um, I guess uh, Mr. Cox, uh, having heard uh, that comment and the city's uh, presentation, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I, I just uh, wholeheartedly agree with the city report on this and the staff recommendations, um, as well as the comment we received from um, the community here, Miranda. It's nice to connect with you uh, in this hearing here. Um, yeah, and I do think big picture, it's, we have been spinning our heads around trying to figure out how to actually develop this uh, lot into something responsible here. And um, you know, we are trying to meet the overall city goals with this plan. So we hope, um, uh, we hope the city agrees with that as well. Okay. Um, I, I will receive uh, as it, as evidence the city staff report. Um, and uh, with that and, and the hearing that we've had tonight, um, I will take it under advisement and issue a written decision on this. So um, ho hopefully that'll be out in the next couple of weeks, week or two. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> um, so that leaves us with our last item here on the agenda tonight, which is the appeal of a COA denial at uh, approximately 370 North, 200 West uh, by Kevin Anderson. City staff on this is uh, Noah Elmore. We also have present um, senior city attorney, Catherine Pasker. Okay. And, and Ms. Pasker, will you be representing the city on this one? So we have a couple of, Noah is definitely our subject matter expert, and he'll be walking you through the staff report and, and various issues that were brought up in the city's um, yeah, discussion of, of the appeal and the application that was filed. I understand that there has been a request to postpone this matter. Um, the city just received um, a number of submissions um, by the appellant today and I believe late yesterday afternoon. Um, so we wanted to make that request known um, to you as a hearing officer, let you decide um, if that is, I mean, the city doesn't have a have a strong preference, but um, wanted to let you know of that request and to either um, have the hearing go forward and the presentation by the parties tonight, um, but provide the city additional time to respond to the numerous submissions submitted by Mr. Anderson in the last 24 hours or uh, to postpone this hearing for a later date, um, hopefully just next month, um, depending on agenda availability and um, establish some kind of schedule for, you know, any remaining submissions Mr. Anderson would like to make, you know, 14 days before that rescheduled date to give the city some time to respond so that all submissions can be made and uh, submitted and reviewed by the hearing officer before the, the hearing actually takes place. Okay. So, um, yeah, my, my 
anticipation of tonight is that this would be a hearing de novo. So I would be hearing both ev evidence, um, uh, you know, fact finding information as well as uh, legal argument regarding the decision and, and all of that. L let me ask this question. So um, is, is the city requesting more time because it wants to be able to uh, obtain additional evidence to rebut what's been provided? Or is the city wanting just more time for for like legal argument and briefing sort of a thing? Uh, to be frank, I don't I don't know. It could be both. I haven't had the opportunity at all to review what Mr. Anderson has submitted. So to be frank, I don't know precisely what's in there and if additional facts. I believe I've seen some kind of expert. I mean, as at least entitled as some sort of expert report. I have not reviewed that at all. That seems like a sub significant, you know, factual submission at this very late date um, that the city would at least need to review in order to consider whether additional facts needed to be elicited in order to, you know, provide the hearing officer with a, a robust discussion of the issues. Sure. Okay. Um, so, And, and just so that I think we all understand what what is there, I I, I was also um, made aware of some new things uh, today. Uh, there were four documents posted, I believe. Is d does that sound right, Mr. Anderson? Uh, that sounds that sounds right, Your Honor. Um, I. I did originally ask for an extension because I was going out of the country for two weeks and I told no, I would not be returning to the country until the 14th, which was Tuesday. Um, he said, no, I, we can't grant an extension, uh, but we will let you submit your documents after you return. Uh, and so after I returned, I had been working fast and furiously to prepare the documents because I was advised there was no extension and have submitted them all now. Um, and so I'm ready to go forward. Okay. If this were, if this were an in-person hearing, the way it traditionally was handled, um, we would be able to come to the hearing and present um, uh, documents at the time of the hearing. Uh, I wasn't aware that there was a, some kind of deadline uh, by which they had to be provided. Noah didn't advise me of that, but indicated file them after you return because I because of the, the out of out of country travel. So uh, my preference is to go forward, but uh, whatever you decide, uh, I will abide by. Okay. And, and again, I just want to be sure we're on the same page. So the the documents that that I received were entitled "Description of Alleged Error and the Reasons for This Appeal," um, February fourteenth, twenty twenty four, Exhibit A. Yeah, and I submitted that as an exhibit to uh, a, a legal memorandum that I called "Position Statement." It's mm -hmm. an Exhibit A. That document itself was actually attached to the city's um, staff report. So uh, that's not a new document. It just Correct. is an exhibit to, to my oral argument. On it. Yeah. That's what I observed, yes. Yeah. Um, and then there's a, a Word document entitled List of Painted Brick Houses, uh, Capitol Hill and Extension. Um, there's a PDF file entitled Map. Uh, which has a couple, I think, of photos um, of pins on a map. And then there is, sorry, just closed it, another document entitled Position Statement of Landowner, yeah. um, which I think is is essentially your kind of your brief. Yes, that's right. Page. So, okay. And um, Ms. Pasker, are, are those the documents that you have? I don't know that I've seen a document titled position statement. Um, I'm I'm sure if that has been uploaded to you, staff has it. It's just kind of do, do all the emails get circulated correctly. That's fair. Um, 
but I've also seen a PDF Matthew Jones expert report. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that, I got that at 446 and it looks like it was emailed by Mr. Anderson at 444. So okay. I don't know if you even have that one yet. I, I that, haven't seen that. That is the last document we've submitted, Your Honor. Uh, okay. uh, Mr. Jones provided that to me uh, as he arrived for uh, uh, participation on this hearing. Uh, it's a, uh, in terms of text, it's a one, two, two and a half page document with some photos. Um, okay. Four photos. Give me just a second here. Okay. Um, so I'm just reading the uh, the ordinance here regarding the appeals hearing. Um, so under um city code salt lake city code 21a.16.040 uh subsection n it states that the planning director shall adopt policies and procedures consistent with the provisions of this section for processing appeals the conduct of an appeal hearing or for any other purpose considered necessary to properly consider appeal an appeal um and those those uh policies and procedures are posted on the city website um in those policies and procedures <clears throat> under Under section C, um, under section C6, submission of written materials, it says 6D, it says written materials from the appellant or petitioner should be submitted to the project staff at least 14 calendar days prior to a meeting to give time for staff to analyze the material prior to finalizing the staff report. If materials are submitted after this date, the item may be postponed to give other parties and the appeals hearing officer time to analyze the information. Um, if the matter is delayed by the appeals hearing officer, written materials should be submitted 14 days prior to the rescheduled meeting date. And uh, so based on that, I am gonna grant a continuance of this hearing um, and uh, we'll uh, reschedule this um, for another date. I don't know. 
um, not having done this before, uh, Aubrey, is that something that we'll schedule now or will that be scheduled in the future? Um, I can schedule it and get back to you as when that will be held. Okay, so, so we, won't, we won't schedule it now. We'll just send out notice? Correct. Okay, perfect. So yeah, we'll, we'll just continue this then to uh, a future date that uh, Aubrey will provide notice for. And then um, as those policies and procedures mentioned, just would request that uh, written materials be submitted 14 days prior to the to the hearing date. All right. By the you. appellant, is that right? By the appellant, I you know what I would I would ask um, uh, if the city is going to provide stuff that they they provide it within a reasonable time as well. Um, so, you know, if if written materials are submitted uh, fourteen days prior to the scheduled hearing date, then I would um, I would I would expect the city to have their stuff pre uh, returned within you know seven days. To give the appellant, uh, to give uh, Mr. Anderson time to look over that that stuff as well. Okay. That's if that makes sense. Um, um, any Aaron, questions about that? We do have one person in the attendees list who was here. I'm guessing as part of the public hearing, who has raised their hand. Okay. Um, who is that? It just says E B. It doesn't say a name. E B. Okay. Uh, do either of you know who that is? I don't. Your Honor. Okay. Um, go ahead and let you be in, and let's see what what uh, they have to say. This this was scheduled as a public hearing. EB, you have the ability to unmute yourself. Thank you kindly. I'm just curious how the public will be made aware of the continuance and when the next meeting will occur. So the next meeting will be notified just as this meeting was notified. Um, you'll receive a, a notice in the mail. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or issues that we need to deal with tonight then on this, ish on this uh, item? I don't have anything else. No, thank you. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Thank you. With that, we'll, we will adjourn the hearing. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron.